Thank you for staying with us this far. We continue within the headlines just to run you through the pages of the different dailies that we have this morning. A copy of the Daily Nation is what I have. And as you can see, that is the main read. Uhuru Raila plot knock like coalition as one of the three strategies that it is said their um, strategists are looking into when it comes to preparing for the 2022 general elections. Going back 19 years to understand what NAC party did, the Rainbow Coalition did, in order to see what they can implement moving forward as they prepare to, you know, uh, put up a formidable challenge against the deputy president's UDA come 2022 general elections. Um, pictured there in the main pictures in regards to Kenya's winning streak as Agnes uh, Tanui celebrates after winning the women's TSC Amsterdam mar marathon yesterday and she did dedicate that particular win to the late Terob saying that it is sad that you know such a kind and uh, gentle hearted person had to die and you know give Given that she had known her for some time, only when her star was start, uh, starting to shine, she said that she wasn't able to share this moment with uh, Tirop right there. And uh, speaking of Tirop, there is a story concerning the investigations that are currently underway when it comes to her murder with a police commander in uh, Keio North sub-county saying that they have arrested a third person um, whose gender they have declined to uh, disclose as well as their identity. But there is an inside source who says that the third suspect may be a man who was involved in the transferring of some of Tirop's property to her lover's uh, under her lover's name. Uh, what else? Uh, still in politics, Ryla says he will care for families of national heroes and he did say this when he was visiting the widow of the late Dedan Kemathi at her home here in Nairobi. Ruto drums up support. Uh, hey, support. Hey, 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 hey. Nisiulizu anything? Nisiulizu anything? Breathe in, breathe out, continue. That reminds me of my late show, who used to be Victor. Yeah. Victor, because there was a rap here. Hey. 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 Call it Banya in Lure. See, tonight at Jaromi. That one. In a sip to <laughs> support. Breathe in, breathe out, hey. then continue. Hey. 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 Kaupepo to Kaupepo. <laughs> Kaupepo to <laughs> issue. As uh, Ruto drums up support. <laughs> Question, can you whistle? <laughs> I can. Oh, you Don't can. Don't challenge me. I ah, know. No. <laughs> Please <laughs> continue. Accept. You can do that. Oh. <laughs> I, I was just threatening. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, right. Finally, we move on to um, this particular interview that was done here by this particular daily featuring uh, Waigoro, uh, Kirinyaga governor, in terms of preparations for the Mashuja Day celebrations, saying that we will be civil on Mashuja Day, then our local politics will follow thereafter. But as per these celebrations that are just a day away, we all need to be mature and understand that this is a national event. Politicking, I'm a politics buyer, but I. That is the front page of the Daily Nation today. Victor. All right. Victor. <laughs> yeah, Victor, instead of V, so it would come out like Hui. Victor. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> On the front page of the Star newspaper, Raila storms Mount Kenya east as he wins big wigs. He will be in Meru today, then moves to Tarakanithi on Tuesday for Azimio La Umoja. Uh, uh, the um, three governors, Dait Kiraitu Murungi, Martin Wambora, and Mudomi Njuki, will receive the ODM leader there. Um, we also have on the front page of the Star four elderly villagers lynched for witchcraft in Marani Kisi County. I will give you more details on that story, as well as taxpayers risk losing 637 billion shillings for breach of power supply contracts. Regina will have to tell us something about that shortly. So, Deputy President William Ruto said to Kenyans that beware of hypocrites. Ruto warns Kenyans. DP says that he will. He was almost jailed at the Hague because of Raila Odinga. Uh, he said that those attacking his candidature and his character are the hypocrites who are used to using and dumping their friends after they get what they want. Ruto called on Kenyans to be wary of leaders who come on them, or to them rather, with beautiful words, with little action. 
that is yesterday when he was speaking to residents in Changambwe, as well as um, some good news. New hospital set up for soldiers as Uhuru leads in marking KDF Day. President Uhuru Kenyatta on Sunday unveiled a new 150-bed military hospital at Kahawa Garrison in Kiambu County as he led the nation in marking this year's Kenya Defense Forces Day. Uh, it's a level four hospital, uh, which is also part of the government efforts to boost the welfare of the KDF that has been established of other regional health facilities in Isiolo and Eldoret to offer quality health care for the soldiers. And that story of four elderly villagers lynched for alleged witchcraft in Kisi. It said that um, they were murdered at Nyagonyi village in Marami, Marani, Kisi County, following the night abduction of a secondary school student found unconscious on the path to his house. Now, he was said to have been abducted previously under the mysterious under mysterious circumstances and had been sickly. So when villagers spat on him, he regained consciousness and began to speak, setting off a frenzy according to witnesses. Uh, the three of those lynched were women. One was a woman, was a man in his 80s. <laughs> that happened in Kise. Regina, taxpayers risk losing 637 billion shillings for breach of power contracts. Um, it's an independent power produ uh, producers who are likely to pocket that amount, 637 billion for breach of contract, even as the government is pushing to cut electricity costs. Is it all doom and gloom for Kenyans? You know, um there's so much that is happening behind the scenes when it comes to the energy sector and yeah. actually focusing on matter of, you know, uh, distributing power. And mm. that is Kenya Power. Remember, Kenya Power does not generate power. Yes. Mm -hmm. It distributes power. Mm. So they're independent power producers. And yeah. the president has said, not once, not twice, but the cost of energy, the cost of power is to calm down. Even Interior Cabinet Secretary, uh, when he was in uh, a senior, mm. he actually said the same. So government is really working to bring down the cost of power. But then the question, when you talk about the cost of power, who carries the chunk of it? Who earns more? You know Kenya Power is a monopoly, right? But who owns Kenya Power? Yeah. Who stands to lose? Who stands to gain? And when they got into these contractual ag agreements, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the numbers, Victor, mm -hmm. you start questioning the persons who are making this decision. Yeah. What were they smoking? <laughs> Do you remember when um, the, contract, the contractual agreement um, between China Exim Bank mm. and Kenya, when it came to the loan, loan provision uh, to construct the standard gauge railway, when the details of that particular contract were made public? Yeah. Mm. Do you remember Kenyans coming up in arms asking who actually sat Thank and negotiated you. these terms? Yeah. That is the same thing when it comes to the independent power producers. So now the taxman, to get ourselves, like mm. to get ourselves as Kenya, as a taxpayer, out of this quagmire. Remember, we do not have, the onus is on you know, government to make the price of power to come down because it affects everything mm. and they have said it through the executive and that's the president and his people have retaliated that but for kenyans to get out of a bad decision that was made by people who are given that responsibility the mandate we will have to suffer because a contract is a contract mm. it was penned it was adhered to it was a it was approved you see so we will we will still cough those monies but perhaps monopoly is also playing a major role in this. You see, it has always, it has always been a conversation yeah. around, you know, we need to diversify. We need to open mm. the energy sector to more players. Mm. And what Kenya Power has been riding on is their vast infrastructure when it comes to the yeah. distribution of power. Yeah. And but again, that is not to mean yes. that if we opened up this sector, this is what I believe, if we opened up this sector, we would not have someone else who wants to put up something else. Let me take you back to 2019, I think 2020, there are about, there was talk that actually people are opting 
to go for solar Mm -hmm. yeah. are mm -hmm. opting to go solar because it is reliable. I mean, we live in the tropics, so to speak, so we have no shortage of sun. And once you do your solar panels, that's a lifetime investment. That's a lifetime investment. And that's how even modern houses that are coming up, you're seeing they're putting a solar aspect. Why? Mm -hmm. Convenience, and affordability, reliability. Yeah. Yeah. That is what our current power producer I mean, power distributor, that is Kenya Power, lacks. Lacks. So if we were to open up this sector, I'm sure there's an investor who would actually want mm. to pitch in. But it is so close. So, yeah, monopoly has to play. Mm. And talking about monopoly, Kenya Power, and I'm going to say it with, without fear or favor, Kenya Power is the only utility firm that mm. is going to disconnect your power and tell you, by the way, we do not work over the weekends, but they deliver, deliberately disconnect power on Friday. Yeah. Because that, that is my current situation right now. That's so they honest. disconnect the power, yeah. right? But they're not in their offices. They do not give it, they do not know, they don't even want to know what happens. So you have to uh, wait till a working day, which is yes. Monday. Yes. And the sad thing is, they're now transitioning to these smart meters. Yes. Which we'll be talking about in a break. But let me let's take a quick breather. We'll be back to Endelea Kuwasha Yidhitima in a few. But Aniwasha steam. Quite literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll be back. We do that. Or as remember for the details that are available on our website so we're talking about the issue of kenya power and what is even happening on our social media platforms several people have lots of complaints actually i've not seen any positive message when it comes mm. to matters of kenya power from exaggerated bills to poor customer service loopholes because uh -huh. when someone gives you a bill an electricity bill of twenty two thousand. And they've never come to check. They have never come to read your meter. Mm. They tell you that's an estimate. You have to pay it before um, they actually do the corrections. Yes. And the um, good thing, you know, as a citizen, by the way, if you're using the old the postpaid bills, yeah. always take a picture of the meter reading. Yeah. Always take a picture of the meter readings to avoid these situations where an, uh, they estimated the meter reading and you don't have photographic evidence to show that this is actually the correct figure because you will pay for an erroneous bill mm. if you do not have photographic evidence to back your claims and your statements. And I'm glad these days, at least one thing they are doing right is um, introducing this uh, self-reading option mm. for those that are on postpaid. You're able to take your meter reading for yourself and submit it mm -hmm. but you still find that some of them um the kenya power officials come and read the meters and they put erroneous figures and that is where i think personally i have had a problem with doreen what has been expe your experience i haven't quite had an experience but hey you're lucky <laughs> 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 tokens, tokens. but you see this is again why a good number of kenyans are really shifting to solar and the, the solar kind and the solar uh, the, the solar panels and they're really trying to mm. invest a lot into that nonetheless because they just want to disconnect themselves from having to get power from Kenya power and sometimes not because when someone has an experience but just by listening to stories you see like someone like me the way I'm listening to these stories chances are I'll just try and look for any other alternative I may get because of the kind of problems and issues presented therein. Because for someone to just present a bill to you, you've never seen this person coming to check nothing. Coming to check nothing, and here they are, and you have to actually pay. And sometimes it gets so difficult, you try to make phone calls, you try to follow up, and there's nothing that is being done for you. And we, all, we obviously know how electricity is important and necessary. It's really just that important. So sometimes perhaps this is again why Kenyans are really deflecting and moving towards looking for any other options or alter, al alternative that may be there to just try and see how they can get power or electricity altogether. My experience, whenever someone says Kenya power, I equate it to ujeuri and impunity. It is as simple as that. When you know that these people do not have an option, mm. yes, they, they will make noise, they will do X, Y, Z, but they have no option. I mean, I'm the only one. But also, when you look at yeah. it, I feel like the bigger problem is also in that customer service. Because just yeah. try and imagine, let's, let's assume someone has presented this bill to you, whether it's true or not. But if the customer service was actually good and legit, you get to have this conversation with someone, try to get to an understanding. 
then perhaps there will not be this kind of complaints that we are hearing because of Kenya Power. Eh, 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 watch out. Like it's it's all customer service. Also. Please stop, customer. Oh, please just <laughs> stop. You know, the sad thing is, <laughs> stop. When <laughs> it comes to <laughs> customer, <laughs> there is no customer service. You may have service. experience, uh, 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 uh. You don't even on talk Twitter. about it. On Twitter. <clears throat> on call. Physically. Uh, uh. Mm -mm. I've done all three. <laughs> and we're living in a time where electricity is a basic need. Yeah, that's why I say it's it important. It has become a basic need. Can so you imagine the losses that people go through because of an erroneous move that was made from an office somewhere? The stock that you have for people who have families, you do I your know. cereals, mm. you pack them up, you put them either in the freezer, yes? Mm -hmm. You have done your, your meat, yeah, your proteins, you have done your milk. Those who are breastfeeding, you have put that milk stock somewhere for the baby, the stock, you know? Mm. But someone has the audacity to say, yes, we've disconnected your power, but we do not do any reconnections until Monday. They're mm. telling you that, yes, on Saturday morning with confidence. Akio Kofisi. And sometimes, confidence. And sometimes even just from this, like the way I'm telling you, even from and the I'm stories And I'm like, you even don't want to know even that Monday that there's is a, not, there's is a not, mistake you have made. For them, it doesn't matter. It's not even that Monday morning. And if it gets to around four, you have to wait up until think, Tuesday. Tuesday. And so, sometimes you don't even have an option. The way you're mentioning, you don't have a choice. So you have to pay nonetheless yeah. mm -hmm. and try to see if you can ever sort this thing. Mm. I, think, I think even the good book says that my people will perish for just mere lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. And at this particular point, every Kenyan, so to speak, you know, somebody receiving a bill you know of 20,000 shillings and you're a one bedroom or two bedroom house where you just have simple electronics and the appliances the fridge and you're a new resident exactly you're a new area. resident the, the instant shower and what have you you can't even consume 5,000 or even 10,000 shillings and you don't even month. stay there the whole day you know? exactly you know so I think um, if you ask me Kenya Power should be like a police station <laughs> which can never be closed down whichever way at any time, at any time, 24 7, 24 7, 7 should yes. be on call. Um, yeah, so it that parasitol has been rocked, you know, a lot of uh, issues. And let's see what uh, CSKTR will do about it. Well, we should okay. have the military taking it over <laughs> as well. <laughs> wow, yeah, <laughs> anywho, let's get back to that's the a good idea, Jade. Let's latch on to that. Yes, you have seen the entities that have been taken over, like the, the Kenya, Kenya Meat, Meat Commission, Commission. Mm -hmm. yes. Nairobi mm -hmm. Metropolitan, yes. yes, you know, and even the construction of the SGR. So, now, what are we saying? Some of this can we have Kenya together? Power also now just go under? And, uh, and the defense forces. Uh -huh. Some of these parastatals, they need I to think go under that. That would change so many things. I, are we ready for that? Why not? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, it but the change. problem would be. <laughs> the but the problem, but the problem would be, and maybe it's because are I've we watched ready for a, that? a lot of question. movies. You see, that, that's the thing about change. You are always never ready up until when it actually happens, and you realize yeah. you, you needed it. No, but looking at um, the amount of change and ripple effect that will come as such sometimes you can never really fathom to what extent mm. um, something can spill over i'm just thinking in the event that i'm not saying i do not have any other information can you imagine when there's a coup d'etat one or two <laughs> 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 ah, <laughs> now i see why one boy asked are we ready are we ready, <laughs> are we ready? i think i watched yeah. a lot of movies so please uh, front page of the standard. Remember, these are just are entirely your opinions, just trying to understand how things work. It's good to always have a debrief, mm -hmm. and this is the best way to have a debrief with our colleagues here. And we are open to you to receive your feedback. You can get us on Twitter at KBC Channel 1. So I have a copy of the standard, and the front page is Matters Politics, as we mentioned earlier. The root of factor. That is something that has been changing. You know, bottom-up economics, this has been the deputy president uh, running mate to Uhuru Kenyatta. There was a bromance there in the early, you know, early years of this particular pact. But now the rift is so wide, you know, between the president and his deputy, and we cannot ignore it anymore. Run up to the general elections question is the root of factor. Is he a front runner or a pace setter? 
2022. Victor, I've heard you have analysts there who say um, some who are of the opinion that the deputy started uh, is likely to suffer burnout because he started his campaign way earlier. Mm. But that's just an opinion. You know, that's just yeah. an opinion. As you say, a day in politics is quite a long time. Things yeah. change. Now, this particular article is going for that aspect. Front runner or 2022 pace setter. Last week, towards the end of last week, Victor, there was also the Mudavadi. Mudavadi question, especially when it comes to who is going to succeed Uhuru Kenyatta. Remember, Uhuru Kenyatta has been meeting members of OKA. The first meeting did not go so well. Last week, you were seeing, you know, trying, you know, having these people in one place, the meeting with the ML, uh, uh, Mount Kenya uh, Foundation there with Raila Odinga. And there have been analysts. We had a professor here who was quoted, a professor from the University of Nairobi, saying that in the political scene, we need to look at Musalia Mudavadi. Kinley. Kinley. He might just be, you know, the ace up the sleeve. But we do not know. The question this morning is about Ruto frontrunner or 2022 pace setter. What is your take? Get us on Twitter at KBC Channel 1, at Doreen Arange, at Jane Wamboy, and at Victor Olo at Ray Manyara too. So for three years, the deputy president has been on the campaign trail, giving him a clear advantage. But as other aspirants emerge and sell their candidature, will he be able to maintain his pace to the finish line? Did he start too early? And what is too early in your opinion? Remember, this is just what uh, one of these scribes this morning has chosen to go as a front page read with you a kicker Ray, there. Allow me to just jump in at that particular point. When it comes to politics, there is no politician who is in government that fails to talk about the next term just mm. when they have gotten in. Yeah. Just as they have gotten in. Because even, trust me, even the next government when it comes into office, there will be mention of the next government, of the next term, of the next five years. It's always, I don't think there's starting too early or rather they all start too early. Mm. But I think both all of them, a, it's just that for this particular case, we are seeing the DP to given he's going for the top job. And of course, that is something that touches on each and every single Kenyan. Yeah. But also, I think going by that scribe and what the standard has captured, perhaps it's just the way in which the DP has been doing it. Because obviously... Going against the grain? Yeah, it's mm. just in the... You know, it's, it's one thing to do it. It's a different story, the way in which you're doing it. So perhaps that is why they've captured it that way. As they capture that, they've also quoted two personalities here. Mm. And I want to read in verbatim just as it has been presented in this particular daily. daily. That is Junette Mohammed of ODM who says, Ruto, he is just a pace setter because the competition has just started. And unfortunately for him, everyone else can only gain while well, the only thing that can happen to him is lose his numbers. That is according to Junette Mohammed. On the other hand, the question of is Ruto gaining or is he a pace setter, you know? So... Boni Halawale of UDA says, Ruto is gaining. It is humbling that after months of attacking our wheelbarrow symbol and the bottom-up economic, econ economic model, our competitors are now playing catch-up because we have shown the way. I, I think, Regina, mm -hmm. um, having th that statement could be political, so to speak. It is very political. It's political. <laughs> very um, political. You know, in politics, you'll have to, they say, chafua jina ya opponent wako. Kabisa. Right? For you to gain. <laughs> yes, chafua this side so that you can gain. <laughs> they all know that Deputy President William Ruto is not a pace setter. Um, he has a lot of steam. For four years, he's been consistent. I, he's been pushing all the odds and ends just mm. to make sure that he makes his name out there. So when, uh, you know, in politics, so that you can gain. But then now, they will have to make sure, uh, you know, just to make the deputy prince look like, you know what, Aliaza Mapema. So mm. what you're going to do, the new and the real candidates are here. So with, you know, in due time, you're just So Victor, you're saying this is a strategy. Really to discredit him. To discredit him. The real candidates are yes. here. Even Deputy President William Ruto, the other day, said that he's the only way to Mount Kenya. Those are the people, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Those are the people who are saying that I am the way to Mount Kenya. So in politics, Cheza na maneno, and they understand it pretty well. Because <laughs> actually here, let me just tie that whole um, story to this particular piece here. Yeah. Inside Uhuru and Raila's coalition power plan, mm. they are now looking to go back 19 years 
to look into how the, uh, the Rainbow Coalition was put together mm. as one of their political strategies to, and I quote, annihilate. Yeah. That's a word that has been used here. To annihilate the deputy president's UDA um, and other alliances ahead of the 2022 general elections. Mm. That's Looking at what NAC Kenya, it has been termed as one of the grand coalitions that stood the yeah. test of time yeah. in looking at Kenya's political history. Now, something happened last week, and I want to bring it up. It's also mm. tied on politics. So we have a new rebranded party, UPA. It is not my Kimeru. <laughs> UPA, <laughs> United Progressive Alliance. But William Ruto's like is that. UDA. United Victor, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Sure. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Political mm -hmm. rhetoric. Nah. -uh. Nitango juxtaposing. Uh -huh. Victor, <laughs> unaona chenye mimi naona. Tunasema yeah. tunacheza na mane? Na no. maneno na, na maneno na chama. You see whenever <laughs> I'm going to speak kawaida. When these campaigns get heated, tukao tukisikia huyu ni mwanachama wa UDA, mm. na ule mwenzake ni wa UPA. Mm. Tuna confuse nani? Wote wawili. Yeah. So what happens? Kama nimesikia p na mwingine amesikia d. Eh? Si weka unataka p unaweka d ukifikiria unaweka p. Utaka kenye umesikia. Are you getting what I'm saying? This for a smart. So tuko hapo. So according to party chairman Eliki Thomas Musamili uh, said that UPA aspires to strengthen the new era of national responsibilities which will be a huge milestone for refocusing the vision 2030 blueprint on a cohesive and prosperous middle income country this party um, is newly relaunched it is eyeing 2022 yes and they say it is anchored on the ideology of participatory economic progressivism za when the participation of this group's social cohesion and cooperation are cornerstones of a more stable and economic development. Hmm. All right. To Nacheza Namaneno, country to see any independent candidates that will declare for the top job. Yes. And talking about independent candidates, in the last by election, Victor, what do you have to say in regard to that? The aspect of independent candidates. We saw what happened at Kabuchai. Mm. We mm. have seen all this by elections. From where you sit, Victor, since now we are fully speaking matters uh, politics. I'm impressed today. This is interesting. Eh, usione tumenya mazati o na. Politics. Politics. Support. Politics around the world. You know, when you have got independent candidates, right mm -hmm. now I think Kenyans have just woken up to realize that it's not about the parties, it's about an individual. But the parties have power. Parties have power, but you see some parties But do Kenyans become... really have that realization, Victor, as you're putting it? It's Sorry? not about party. I'm saying, do Kenyans really have fully that realization that it's not parties, it's actually individual? Some actually, parties... that's where we're going. If you look at the trend, as Victor is trying to say, and remember, mm -hmm. the terminology, tunapiga kura suti. Have you ever heard that? Mm. Exactly. Tunapiga Su suti. Swing. We that's have deviated from that that yeah. you'll see that there's someone who will opt for presidential candidate a mm. from party x come down to the governor pick someone else go to the senator pick yeah. someone else come down all the way to the woman rep why because they're looking at what has what has the potential what is this what has this person brought mm. In this time that they have been in office, do I believe in their manifesto and their willing? I think we are divergent. We're di there's a divergence when it comes from how we used to vote, how the electorate used to vote then, mm. and now that's what I want to believe. Victor, you're saying? All right. Um, Kenyans perhaps are now changing their mindset in terms of who they vote for. You realize some of these independent candidates are either rebels who in one way were denied a party ticket during nomination mm -hmm. and they are strong candidates. So what do they do? They go because they have the power, they have got the people and they, got, they have the goodwill of, uh, and supporters on the ground. They tend to get that sympathy vote and that's how they emerge victorious in all these political, uh, these by-elections. But then now, that wave of having political, uh, having independent candidates winning these seats, the latest one being Ngumba Sumba, if I got it right, Ngo in Masumba. Ma exactly, in uh, Ngo Masumba, Masumba mm. in uh, Makweni. Uh, we, we had an independent candidate, we had got UDA candidate, we had got wiper candidate there. And an independent candidate, you know, beat all of them. So what does that show you, even coming towards 2022? 
in 2017, some political parties lost some of the strong candidates who went ahead and vied as independent candidates and they still won. How it's going to happen is what I've just said. You realize that some of these independent candidates were strong, but they did not have a goodwill mm. with the party. So because you are not, you know, you, you're not uh, a the friend good to... Books. Yes, with the party members, party owners, and the committee and the executive members of the, uh, of the, of the parties, you don't get that ticket. And you see, in, a, in, in any nomination, that party ticket mm -hmm. is as good as you are done. Mm. Yes, and also when it yeah. comes to the nomination process, Victor, mm. I think this is where we will know Mbivu Nambichi. Exactly. Because now there's, there's the rising independent candidate. Mm. They have already seen from history what has, you know, the achievements of their fellow independent yeah. candidates who have actually clinched seats. Yeah, they go there and work pretty well. Yes. Yeah. So now, the nomination, and uh, there was this conversation I think two weeks back uh, with Governor uh, Ainwe Guru also there uh, featuring prominently, saying that you know, uh, no one is going to be... Um, going to just get a ticket just like that mm. that we're going to is going to be um, a collaborative all inclusive mm. aspect and the honors will fall on the electorate and i think this is also a conversation that deputy president uh william ruto also has talked about as yeah. well as also uh the leader of odm there so the nomination the party ticket nomination process always a thorn in the flesh for almost all the aspirants mm. that's Do why you remember you right. the British president said that there will be fairness in uh, you know giving out these certificates for those who are going to vie no. <laughs> do you remember fairness. do you remember the mike movie song call situation mm -hmm. of course yes let's go back there <laughs> yes all right there will be fairness and perhaps this is why also some people just decide i'll go i'll i'll go to it alone because mm. if you talk about fairness how fair mm. are they actually are those nominations okay do you anyway, have all this paper yeah just just quickly <laughs> uh, on the on the front page of the people's daily mm. away from politics to matters education that is what the pd has really focused ex extensively on this monday and this is in regards to you know paying of fees we had this conversation sometime last week given to it was the school reopening week and how some parents are complaining given the fact that in this year alone they have had to pay school fees four times and the ministry had directed that school heads not to send children home as they needed to have like sort of a conversation on how these fees needed to be paid but it just turns out that in some schools in various counties specifically counties of Kakamega, Nakuru, Kiambu have actually sent learners home as be beginning from today because of that issue of fees and this is some school heads decrying the fact that they can't be able to run um, the affairs of the school and just be picking one bite from one of the school heads whereby he's mentioned that um, in some schools the total fees arrears are as high as 15 million and this is just for one class so how much for the entire school so that is what is happening there when it comes to matters education and also teachers to be trained on CBC delivery this article highlighting the reasons as to why there was a bit of resistance when it, come, when it came to the implementation of CBC and that was due to lack of proper training this is why they have ventured into ensuring that teachers get properly trained concerning CBC and also lifestyle audit to return to haunt public servants. Servants. This is after that conversation on what the president had mentioned yes, uh, sometime, that was last week, concerning the Pandora's paper, papers where he said that it would usher in a new age of financial transparency and openness in Kenya and globally. So this new bill in Senate uh, to force civil servants and their immediate families to undertake the wealth probe. However, there are some senators who are against this, saying that this is going to be an invasion of privacy. Again, the article could well highlights um, that whether or not it's actually, come, it's, it's, it's actually going to come to fruition or it will still continue facing resistance when it comes to that uh, issue of lifestyle audit. And also matters health, where now the WHO says that Africa COVID cases are seven times more than they are actually being reported and just to tie that to um, what the state is trying to do given uh, we know Mashujad is coming up on 20th October and they wanted to have, vac to have vaccinated at least a total of 5.8 million Kenyans as per as 
by then, just trying to ensure that between today and tomorrow, they have vaccinated at least a total of 1.6 million Kenyans to hit that 5.8 million mark. Of course, they have put down various strategies on trying to ensure that comes to fruition at least by end of, uh, not by end actually, by the time we get to Mashuja Day there. Also, something on the roads there that I had spotted on this particular daily and this is because this is actually due to the fact that some residents in Kuresoi uh, over the weekend they protested due to poor roads in that particular area. We also saw the same situation in early 2020 just here in Nairobi where some residents around areas of Fika Super Highway had also done the same because of the poor states of those roads and just going by that article it has resulted to a number of death cases. Some women who were pregnant could not be ferried from their homes to their hospitals and again, this is also why we are seeing really the state in a bid to just ensure that they either expand, rehabilitate, reconstruct most of these roads in the city and even beyond. That is how the front page of the People's Daily looks like this morning. And I believe we are due for our second break before we continue with the program. We will be coming. Sorry, yeah, CBC. Whenever CBC is brought up. It takes me back to my home. Una smile, Ukitengeneza. Have you been told to make a model church with locally available resources? <laughs> locally available resources. Unenda supermarket, you buy a cardboard box. Nafu muna ingia YouTube. And a glue. Tape. Sell a tape. It's, ver it's very good quality time with the babies by the time una talk up lakini. Huh. It is well. <laughs> Let me quickly bring you to um, the Daily Nation. And um, this story has been featured here on the front page, I do believe so, but it's in regards to what National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi had to say about Raila Odinga's uh, pledge to be giving 6,000 uh, Kenya shillings a monthly stipend to jobless Kenyans. So he was speaking um, this past weekend in Moranga. He was at the ACK Kongoine Church in Kiharu. And he said that this is not a solution to ending poverty. In his own words, he criticized ODM leader over this promise to give jobless Kenyans 6,000 Kenya shillings every month, saying that in the Mount Kenya region, we don't believe in being given free money. All right. <laughs> He went on to say that what Mr. Odinga is not telling Kenyans is that this money would be coming from the very taxes that they pay, okay? If he wants to present sound economic policies, then he should do away with the culture of handouts, which will continue creating the vicious cycle of poverty than eradicate it. Debate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ready well, what will you be uh, the question, <laughs> Any Kenyan who who is paying taxes, whenever I think we need to come of age and understand that when <laughs> whenever a politician, especially in, during this time of the campaign run up to the 2020 general elections, mm -hmm. whenever we hear some promises, we need to critically actually apply critical thinking. So. We're going to be getting 6,000 per month. And where that's we not need just the only promise, Ray, because he also, when he was visiting the late Dedan Kemati's widow, mm -hmm. he also made another promise mm -hmm. where he will be um, looking at the families of soldiers and police officers who die in the line of duty. They will be uh, protected and taken care of by the government. I think in yeah. as far as the military and the forces are concerned, that is actually a provision that is made for the disciplined forces. It's not something new. But you remember the recent changes, those who remarry? Yes, yeah. there, were, there was that, there, there was that, out. there were yeah. the changes. Such so provision. there was something already in the works. Mm -hmm. But now um, I want to latch on to that aspect of, you know, our, ans our heroes. A majority of our heroes of our history have died and have died miserable. Why? Because at some point they were the elecons, you know, they were the icons in our society, but mm. we forgot them. We forgot them. I wish there was a provision that took into account our heroes. I'm not talking about the controversial awarding of Githeriman. <laughs> and it was around this time, the Mashujade. Yeah. But those heroes who have sweat blood literally for us to achieve what we have achieved as a nation mm. i wish there was such a provision that you see the way people get medals of honor mm. 
you know, of the good badges hearts. of honor. Yes. You know, honor these people who are heroes, heroes. Leave the sensationalism away, you know. I'm not saying every, peop every person who, you know, made it to the, you know, the burning spear of the warrior. Mm -mm. There are people who've actually gotten to that list, yeah, and have done something. But there are people who've been there, and whenever you hear that this person has this and this, I call it, you're like, mm. yeah. Yet, we have, like, there are some, remember, remember we have Mau Mau, Mau Mau persons who have been looking for justice and mm. solutions for years yet their case has taken longer than it should how I wish we could look into our heroes mm. and also apply critical thinking when it comes to these pledges that we are hearing from our politicians because this is a politicking season and as you said to nacheza na maneno critical thinking apply critical thinking there's the line between celebrating our heroes and sensationalization is what seems to be a bit blurry because we have seen a good example is what you've given githeriman vis-a-vis uh, -vis some of our unsung uh, freedom fighters and their families mm -hmm. who deserves what and to what extent you know yeah because in as much as uh, sometimes people don't see the value of githeriman but look at that situation at that particular time in the time, yeah, he was queuing in line. For yeah. Determined, come by and by, I'll be here the whole day. Yeah. So I might as well go with what I can afford yeah. to just make sure that I cast my vote at all cost. Yes. At all cost. And rightfully so. He can be, you know, it was right to celebrate his move, what he did, because he knew Nikikapa sitakula. Na Nikienda, I might not be in time to vote due to the long queues, okay? That in itself shows patriotism, you know. He wants to exercise his democratic right. But then again, here we have our heroes from the freedom fighting times when it was such an unstable time. Mm. But looking at how they are living right now, absolute despondency, man. Hmm. I just, I don't know, I marvel at how our politicians just know the, the right buttons to push to press at every in every place they go to if, I, if my memory serves me <laughs> correct i think it was the other time when uh, one of them was in is it, is it kajiado if i'm not wrong and i uh, was promising to ensure that the issue of land is dealt with because in that area that is an emotive issue you go to meet the widow of dead and kimathi and you know this is like someone who was there in those days fighting for independence of this country and what you can tell us or what you can you know tell this person is that i will actually and just going by this bite because the same story is also on the people's daily that i will ask the government to compensate the victims but even if they don't if they fail to do so my government will do it because you are in that space. You go to the <laughs> eastern part of the country, you know, in that area, perhaps water is a challenge. You tell them, I will make sure we have dams, we have boreholes. Just knowing what exactly to tell Kenyans at the specific place that you've gone to. See, that's how toxic relationships start. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very because toxic it's a, relationship you see, you see, you see this, thing, this thing of freedom fighters, they won't say anywhere else. When they, when they come to Western, they won't tell, 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 tell us about this thing. But if, if, if you go to those people that were there in those times, mm. you tell them that. Victor Lisema to Nacheza na Maneno. Toxic <laughs> relationships. Um, <laughs> you know, that's, and that is why in Kenya, most electorates, we don't vote in members of parliament we don't vote in leaders we vote them out why because after every five years they come you know we'll have mm. to take stock hey you told us you're going to bring for us tapped water you're going to give us schools you're going Where to give it? us hospitals and what have you what have you achieved in five years and then you know what um because i had wrangles with my opponents on that end and this one now because i wasted wrangles almost four years, years of my time. Najua si kupewa yeah. pesa hata yeah. imeleta tu say tukienda kufunga exactly. budget. COVID Wacha nirudisheni. It's hard to break by the way. It's hard to break. Mkinirudisha nitatengeneza hii barabara. Ile barabara Regina, ile barabara. 20 years. <laughs> and but yeah. look at it this way. Yeah. If we did not have those issues that we want our leaders to do for us. You see, they also mm. they would they would not have that swing and sway over us. So they know. They know. Kama ni maji tumekosa maji for years, it will always be and not because they cannot do something about it. It's because yeah. they want to have something to latch on Leverage. every election cycle. Mm. Critical thinking. 
Ay, well, toxic relationships are bad. I mean, <laughs> I think, know, just yeah. talking about it, I already feel so much heartbroken because it's just so sad. All right, guys. Tunambiwa, we need to wrap it up. This mm. has been in the headlines, of course. Just looking at what, what the papers have for us today, and of course, we can never exhaust some of these conversations in this uh, particular sitting. That's why we have subsequent discussions, which we'll be looking into this. So do stay with us. More coming up after this break. <laughs>